Hello, my name is Douglas Block. I'm an author and depression survivor. Uh, welcome to another edition of One-on-One -on -one with a Depression Counselor. Today we're going to do another one of our series uh, interviews of interviews with my good friend and recovering depressive, uh, Noah. Noah is a, f a former client of mine who has gone on to create his own YouTube channel on depression, has many thousands of subscribers and is doing a lot to help a lot of people, and he's been generous enough to offer his time this afternoon to do some interviews with me on topics that will be of great interest to you. So, Doug, what do you mean exactly by the term a wounded healer? A wounded healer is a very common term, Noah. It's been around for quite some time, and it simply means a person who has used the wisdom and knowledge that in overcoming his or her own crisis or healing a problem to help others with the same crisis issue or problem. Uh, this process started you know, many, many centuries ago in indigenous cultures where they noticed that if a person was born with some sort of a defect or an issue, uh, they often became the tribal shaman and became the medicine man of, of that tribe. Okay. And can you give a modern example? In the last interview, I gave the example of Bill Wilson. I need to bring Bill Wilson up again because sure. he's such an inspiration. He struggled his whole life with the disease of alcoholism, almost killed him. He found a way to get better through the grace of God and through uh, this program he developed. And then he used that program, which he used to heal himself, to share with millions of other people through AA, which that program is still going on today. I have another example. Uh, Tony Robbins, who's the great motivational speaker, started out his life with a lot of problems, financial and otherwise. He again uh, struggled, overcame them, and now has helped his own audience. Also, other examples would be someone who was born with a stutter becomes a speech pathologist, or right. someone who was born with a cleft palate becomes someone who is a surgeon who helps others with cleft palates. Yeah. You know, there's many, many examples we can think of, but it's the same basic idea. So it's sort of the, the same reason that my YouTube channel is ever able to be right. to become. I mean, was... I mean, when you speak, you speak with authenticity of someone who's been there and back. Right. And people tell me the same thing. I do a little bit of long distance coaching. Right. And oftentimes people will call me and they'll say, you know, Douglas, you know, I can relate more to you than the psychologist or the psychiatrist because I've been there. Yeah, I just feel your recognition of what I'm going through. And they're just coming from a more intellectual place. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's a powerful thing that I certainly didn't understand until I had the, well, I don't know if opportunity is the right word. Maybe it is, yes, but the yes. opportunity to, to be able to do that. Um, so how does the process of becoming a wounded healer work? Well, uh, I ha ha another wounded healer who I didn't mention, who very few people probably know, except people in the New Thought movement, is Jack Boland. Uh, he was a unity minister who unfortunately died in 1992. Uh, he was a recovering alcoholic. Again, these alcoholics are everywhere, aren't they? Yes, they are. And he founded the Church of Today in Michigan. He used to tell me that there wasn't ever a miracle that first didn't start out as a problem. And that's why he said, bless your problems, because they'll turn into miracles. And then Robert Bly, the great poet, who I believe is still alive, used to say, wherever you have the most pain, wherever your greatest wound is, there will be your gift to the community. Sure. I didn't know what he meant until I went through it myself. Of course. So the problems come, you have the wound, and then you offer the gift. That's why you hear people say they're grateful for having gone through what they went through, no matter what the, the level or the scale of pain and suffering it was. You, you hear people afterwards saying, you know, once they've had the perspective, the opportunity to use it for good, that suddenly they're grateful for it. When, when I was at the worst part of my condition, my depression, I never could have imagined gratitude would be a word I would use. This is why the best recovery counselors are ex-alcoholics and ex-drug addicts. Of course. They know. Yeah. They just know. They know. Yeah. They know. Um, so, so what about some other examples? Well, actually, we've been talking about that. I mean, you know, I wanted to talk about your life and my life, but I think, you know, we've mentioned this in the previous, you know, question. I mean, both of us, you've dealt with alcoholism and depression. I've dealt with depression and anxiety. And we're doing the work we're doing with our YouTube channels, with my website and books and support groups and, you know, your, your constant ministry. We're doing this only because we were forced to go through these conditions and come out the other side. Without that, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. And, 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 and you can look at anybody. There are so many examples. Even uh, I think Susie Orman, who's a financial advisor, very, very well known, she had major financial issues. See, again, that's what Robert Bly said. Whatever the challenge that you're given is, that is the thing you're going to end up giving back to the community. Of course. And, and it's a wonderful feeling to do so. I mean, I, I tell people on my YouTube channel all the time, I'm sure you, you've thought this and or said it yourself, I, I feel like I get more out of trying to be of service to well, others than well, they could possibly get from me. That's why the 12 step FAA is, says go out and share this with other people. Of course. I mean, that's how you keep it fresh and that's how you keep it going by giving it away. Got it. Beautiful. Um, 
So can each of us become a, a wounded healer, or is this just a select few? Yeah, well, there may be select few that you read about, but everybody can because everybody has wounds, right? Sure. I mean, the Buddha said life is suffering, right? M. Scott Peck said life is difficult, right? So we all have struggles, and whatever struggle you've overcome, I mean, think back in your own life, our lives, but I, I'll ask the listeners or the viewers to think back in their lives. Think of a time when you struggled and overcame something. Isn't that the place where you're now helping other people, whether it's professionally or just in your personal life? Sure. And that's why when you're going through a difficult time, try to keep in the back of your mind that if you can get through it and heal yourself, you will be a healer for others in whatever area that is. Powerful, beautiful. Thanks, Doug. Thank you.